More turmoil in the markets today, and a part of this is really brewing because of, again, uh, what the SEC is doing with BUSD, Paxos, how this might be playing out into a much broader effect on the crypto markets. I'm going to dive in on this. I think you guys are going to like it. My name is Paul Barron. Welcome back to the Tech Path. Let's go into it today. And one of the things that, um, if you guys caught my podcast earlier this morning, we put out an audio podcast that we drop in on the Diamond Circle. It's called the Diamond Circle Plus Podcast. Kyle and I do those. I actually had this on as one of the topics. It was one of the things that I was concerned with both on how the markets would respond. They have not responded well. I want to get into this first tweet, and that is from Eleanor Terrett. Um, if you don't follow her, she's a Fox journalist. She's been covering the crypto um, you know, beat for a while. So her statement is that Gensler is embarking on a midnight massacre in an attempt to bring all of crypto under his control in the coming weeks, the SEC, Gov, uh, NYDFS, and the USOCC will be bringing a myriad of enforcement actions against exchanges and banks. So this is going to get interesting. You've got uh, already the action against Paxos, and this obviously is designed to uh, attack BUSD, and that will go into how that affects. Remember, there's a lot of things that tie into the valuation and even the reserves of where BUSD is held. Um, but this could push a lot of uh, aspects around the future of what stablecoins could truly be. This was the story. Paxo terminates his partnership with Binance, stops minting BUSD. Further in their articles, a couple of points here. The decision comes in as close coordinations with the New York Department of Financial Services. This is uh, what we talked about. Uh, Paxos remains that customer safety has always been our top priority. This will not change the wake of the recent announcements. They're going to continue with Pax. Uh, the other thing for customers looking for alternative options, the stablecoin issuer will redeem refunds in U.S. dollars or convert BUSD tokens to the Pax dollar. This is USDB, uh, another regulated uh, U.S. dollar backed stablecoin. So that I think is the C is the the key here. If it's a regulated uh, dollar backed coin, and again you get back into scenarios around like things with Tether, which we'll talk about in a minute, uh, and its relationship with commercial paper, and the uh, even uh, circle to a certain extent, extent USDC. What is it that is being uh, if, and if they're regulated, and what is it that is basically managing the reserve foundation of what those stable coins consist of? And that's the whole point behind BUSD. So all of this points to um, a tweet coming in from CZ. Uh, this is a thread that he put in here. In summary, BUSD issued a redeemed by Paxos and funds are SAFU, of course. Uh, he talks a little bit about uh, a little bit in here, we're informed by Paxos, they're going to direct cease minting. Uh, Paxos regulate, obviously, by the New York Financial Group. Uh, BUSD is a stablecoin wholly owned and managed by Paxos. As a result, BUSD market cap will only decrease over time. This is CZ saying this. And then uh, right here, uh, also uh, assured funds uh, will be secure and fully uh, covered reserves in their banks. Etc. They talk about the alleged SEC uh, Paxos lawsuit. I have no information about it. It's not alleged. It's it's real. Uh, I'm not an expert on U.S. law. Personally, I agree with the Miles logic that it, not that it means much. But his this was the thing that I talked about in the podcast. There it is. That is is BUSD an unregistered security? Many people that have been looking at this for quite some time have uh, have potentially signaled that there could be some scenarios playing into certain stable coins that could fall into this. And we've got a clip here of not only uh, CZ, but also of Gary Gensler talking about this very issue. And even uh, Pat Toomey, one of the congressmen talking about it with Gensler in one of the, um, you know, one of the hearings. So there's a couple things here that are interesting to me is that even after, remember, a few months ago, BUSD basically stopped the whole concept of taking Circle or USDC in and pushing more and more people to BUSD. All of that was basically a ploy. And Binance, of course, I mean, it just seems such an odd push for what's been happening around the whole issue with Binance in this BUSD scenario, especially as we play into this right now. And I can't understand how a company the size of Binance would not have attorneys, especially in the United States, with Binance.us, um, would not have attorneys ready and 
kind of coiled to a position to either one, defend or at least understand the strategic roadmap that you would have to put in place to not deal with this. This was CZ talking a year ago. This is a one-year-old interview, but listen to what he had to say. Uh, of any stable coin. Um, it's different from Tether. Tether is more or less like a black box. I never, no one uh, ever audited it, including myself. Right. I, I don't have any information that's not public. You, your USDC website, is kind of back. Yeah. Your website, though, says that BUSD is subject to regular audits, but they're actually attestations, right? Can you just clarify for us if they're audits or attestations? I'm not sure what I'm actually not sure of the technical detail, to be honest. Uh, um, so the audits would be done by Paxos uh, and they will be conducted with Paxos. So we don't really manage the reserves at all. Um, we just help to promote that uh, stable coin and um, uh, we lend our brand to it. And um, it does. All right. So there you see, you know, they're lending their uh, brand, the brand to it. Let me pause that. Um, which is kind of this almost like a white label, you know, stable coin in essence. If this was a white label stable coin, and yet at the same time, you had Binance pushing so much around this, you know, from our control. I just start to question how Binance has been managing this. And then it starts to lead into, does this have some other effects within their reserves? Also into even things like BNB. And then within the ecosystem of Binance Labs and all the projects in Web3, all the projects within Binance as an ecosystem start to come into question a little bit as this starts to circle in to where the SEC may have an angle on, uh, on BUSD. Further into this, this was Eleanor again tweeting. It says she spoke with an industry expert this morning on BUSD news and uh, thinks, he said, the person said, don't know if it was he or her, uh, I think Garen Gensler and the SEC have truly lost the plot and gone mad with power. I've bought it and sold millions of dollars worth of stable coins and never once did I think I'd profit from them. Now there's an argument to that that many people would look at and say, well, there's, there is some uh, connections to this, but I'll get to that in a second. Uh, by the way, make sure and smash the like button if you, get, if you guys like these kinds of breakdowns, because this is really a puzzle that gets put together by our research team. Then we do a lot of due diligence around this to understand how this affects other markets. So smash the like button. We appreciate it. And of course, always uh, drop some comments over on the side. We'll try to get some of your questions. This was the, the Watcher guru, guru statement. This came in from Circle, USDC, filed a regulatory complaint alleging Binance managed reserves in 2022 or mismanaged reserves in 2022. Uh, this coming over again from Bloomberg. Um, so there's just all of this happening at the same time. You've got the SEC scenario. You've got this uh, somewhat infighting within the ranks. You've got the scenario that we've faced around FTX. Could we be facing another potential black swan um, event? Could that be in the wake of where stablecoin regulation, which has been the thing that DC has really been looking at for quite some time. If stablecoins get regulated, the likely winner of this will be USDC, possibly even PAX, because of its tie into US regulatory environments. And again, they're also giving up on this minting of BUSD very easily. So again, because of the uh, lawsuit from the SEC. Here was the, um, the exchange between Pat Toomey and Gensler. Let me play this for you guys. Let me go back here to the first part of it and play this for you. Now, All let right. me turn to cryptocurrencies. Um, and my time is limited, so I'm going to try to do this as efficiently as I can, Mr. Chairman. But I, I, think, it, I think I know your position, uh, among other things, is that not all cryptocurrencies are inherently securities, right? That's true. Uh, there, there are uh, a small number that aren't, but I think that, uh, the, as Chair Clayton said when he was in front of Congress, I think very many of these uh, okay. facts and circumstances are investor so, contracts. So here's, uh, here's my concern. Um, so some are and some aren't is basically what you're saying. And I'm concerned that the SEC has not provided sufficient definition for, uh, and, and explained how it would apply the Howey test, which I think is the uh, court standard for determining when something is an investment contract. So, for instance, stable coins do not have an inherent expectation of profit. They're just linked to the dollar. Now, you might use them in an attempt to make a profit, but that's a, that's a second order activity. It, is it your view that stable coins themselves can be securities? 
Um, I think, it's, uh, Senator, they may well be securities. Um, as as uh, Thurgood Marshall wrote in the Reeves opinion, um, in uh, defining the scope of the market that it, Congress, wished to uh, regulate, Congress painted a broad brush. And it actually included about 35 different things inside the definition of a security in okay. the 33 I, Act. I, I've just got limited time here, so I acknowledge that. Um, here's my problem, though. I think what you just said was that they may be securities or that some are securities. Um, to me, a stable coin doesn't meet the second prong of the Howey test, that there has to be an expectation of profits from the investment. And so if it doesn't meet the Howey test, it looks to I'm me to, like uh, it's not a security. All right, so you can kind of see this was uh, replayed from uh, Gensler on September 14th, 2021. Obviously, you saw Cardano at $2.36. That's not where, where it's residing. But this was in September of 2021. Win Patumi. And a lot has happened within DC to understand what the regulatory environment might look like. But again, I think a lot of challenges have started to occur around this sector. Um, and it's going to be interesting because you've got two areas. Remember, Tether, in my podcast earlier this morning, if you're subscribed to our Diamond Circle, uh, you, you heard me go into this whole point around te Tether's minting of a billion dollars basically for liquid reserve access to be able to take on some of the heat from BUSD, I think, is where this is rolling. But uh, the other aspect of this is just the encompassing scenario that plays into what's happening right now in crypto. We talked about this last week, and this was Nick Carter's post that he did on this choke point concept, and that there was several you know, dominoes that were falling, that the SEC was in construct here of trying to essentially manage a guided fall, so to speak, or guided power control of where and what they would be in consideration uh, that falls under the SEC guidance, which, you, you know, if Gensler is at the helm, is wanting all of crypto under that. Um, that being the case, you got guys like Brian Armstrong, the CEO over at Coinbase, saying, all right, Coinbase's staking services are not a securities. We'll happily defend this in a court if needed. Now, Coinbase has definitely got enough, uh, I think, gravitas to do this. The question is whether or not they have the legal standpoint, because it is such a gray area, depending on staking, stable coins, all of that. Uh, granted, staking a little different than what a stable coin scenario that we're talking about today. But if you look at Coinbase just in, in what they're trying to do, uh, this is their staking services are not securities. He goes into a, a whole litany of things of why. Let me zoom in on this. Reason your crypto earns is staking assets that are putting uh, crypto to work in exchange for payment. Uh, from the blockchain itself, Coinbase core staking services is offered through our Coinbase Earn program, which allows users to stake certain assets, recurring payment from the blockchain protocol. We also help users stake through products like Coinbase Wallet, Coinbase Cloud, uh, which allows developers to run their own validators, etc. Doesn't necessarily tell us that staking is still not, at the end of the day, this boils down to one thing, and I say this all the time, follow the money, follow where the power grabs are going, and also follow how Gensler is related to that because politics move with intent. And what I mean by that is there's usually somebody pulling the puppet strings. Gensler is not the guy pulling the strings. He is the puppet. The question is where and how. Is it the banks? Is it Wall Street in general? Is uh, this whole idea of a choke point scenario really playing out in front of us? Uh, that, I think, is going to be the question mark that we'll continue to see. And then you had Eleanor Jarrett, you know, talking about this whole orchestrated potential, you know, uh, massacre, midnight massacre coming at us. Then you got Brian Armstrong saying, okay, listen, I'm in D.C. I had a meeting canceled. Uh, but by the way, I'll be over at the state office building in a snack bar. If you want to come talk to crypto, come and talk to me. Uh, I kind of took back from this for a second, especially as I look further into the tweets. I mean, there's a handful of people there maybe talking. But, I mean, it's, he's taking pictures of a snack bar. What, what is going on here? I mean, is this, uh, is this how we're being represented in D.C.? I, granted, I get that there's a little bit of a relaxed, you know, M.O. here. But I think the model of when you're in D.C., and he even talks about this, is, you know, wearing a tie, going to these meetings, understanding that how you address, you know, these lawmakers. All of this has a certain criteria that's set forth in 
uh, the model in which you go to D.C. and try to you know, lobby and or campaign for something like what they're doing. I think Brian is really going to have to step up his game to be able to even engage at this level. Obviously, there are some younger uh, congressmen and women that are under at least understand that maybe there's some new ways of doing business. But I think for the most part, you're going to have to win over the bulk of Congress and lawmakers as a whole. Uh, so I think that's a big one. Piper Sandler, cautiously optimistic about Coinbase's uh, despite uh, the staking concerns, and this is Piper Sandler, but remember Piper Sandler, Sandler highly invested in coin, the stock for Coinbase. So don't necessarily take that with a grain of salt. When you're reading these kinds of highlights and, and headlines like that, guys, is kind of follow the money. What kind of investment position are they in? Uh, look at try to understanding where the cycle is and where the support is for all of this. So you've got defenses happening right now on a couple of fronts. Right now you've got a potential stablecoin defense uh, that could be playing out, and I'll explain that in a second. You've also got the whole situation with uh, Coinbase playing out uh, and pushing into the Earn product and trying to hold that. Uh, But it is something that uh, I think starts to really play uh, going forward. I want to thank our sponsor today. That is Ledger. Through all of this, the best thing to do you know, is get your crypto assets, the good ones that you know we talk about here on the show all the time, Bitcoin, Ethereum, handful of altcoins. Make sure you're doing self-custody. It's the number one practice that I coach and uh, try to talk about constantly here on the show. Do not trust these online wallets. Uh, we already have seen some exploits coming in on MetaMask again. Uh, we've seen scenarios playing out with uh, Huobi. All of that playing into it. Guys, this is the smartest way to secure your crypto, and that is self-custody. You control the keys. You're your own bank. Use our link below. It does help uh, the channel out. Here's this news story that I was kind of explaining. Huobi Cloud Wallet, no more. Exchange pulls the plug on the DeFi multi-token wallet. Again, this gets back into cloud wallets. I use them for transitory engagements. And I understand a lot of you guys are on MetaMask because of the NFT connection and all those kind of things. But in the future, I think you're going to need to go with a hardware wallet for even NFTs. I think that is the future of where this market is going. And as we see banks coming into this, I would wager that hardware wallets will be interestingly uh, received by banks unless the banks themselves start to create these digital components. That will be another story for another day. But uh, like I said, the one thing you need to be doing. So here was the question, are stablecoin securities, it's not so simple. A couple of lawyers kind of tuning in on this and a couple of points that they're making. The answer in, isn't as black and white. Uh, there exists an argument f- uh, for it that stablecoin was issued in the expectation of profits and or derivatives of securities. Uh, this is uh, Gabriel Shapiro. He's a, an attorney. Uh, he goes into this uh, pretty well detailed don't hate me, but custodial stable coins are probably all securities. Uh, he's talked about this before. Uh, security laws are just insanely broad. And this goes back to what Gensler was talking about with Toomey on that clip back in 2021, is that there's like 39 different instruments that could be deemed securities. So it's possible that this might play into it. With stable coins, a particularly contentious issue, whether the investment is in the stable coin led a person to an expectation of profit, the third arm of the Howey test, Uh, On a narrow view, the whole idea of a stablecoin is that it's stable. On a broader view, it could be argued that arbitrage, hedging, and staking opportunities provide an expectation of profit. That's where it gets a little gray, and I think that's where it gets into regulatory guidance that essentially is just going to have to be done by the lawmakers. Once this is done, the likelihood is Gensler is going to be defanged in what he can and cannot do, at least in this area, possibly even in staking, Uh, outside the fact that we may see a lot of this pushing into um, the scenario of um, banks. And I think the banks are essentially the ones that potentially could be behind all of this, guys. So remember, we're still in this bear market. What's the number one thing that we should be looking at? Who's going to be doing acquisition? You don't see the banks and MasterCard and all those guys slowing down. They're continuing to partner. They're doing all of these steps. So if all of this was such... Uh, in disarray, why would we see those kinds of actions continuing to take place? So a lot definitely happening in the market for sure. Uh, This was a statement that says, here's why the stablecoin and Binance FUD might be overblown. I'm not necessarily in the same camp with this, but Binance CEO is puzzled. 
Uh, as the, uh, they're obviously on a war path, this was talking about uh, what we said earlier, is that they're really coming after quite a few. Uh, SEC labeled BUSD as an unregistered security and is suing its issuer, Paxos. This we know, that's why Paxos shut it down. Argument is difficult uh, for the SEC to refute, uh, which illustrates that the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission may not have a problem with stablecoins per se, but the issuer's interest uh, products. So that is where it gets into the Binance. This still may be um, almost like a personal vendetta with CZ, because remember, he's been playing cat and mouse with the SEC for quite a while. Uh, Circle has had similar product earned, uh, product that earns interest. Presumably, that's why USDC issued, came under secu- uh, scrutiny of the SEC, but not because of the stables coin itself, just because of the earned position. Remember, uh, Circle, last year, about this time, they were offering as much as 5% on holding Circle accounts, enterprise accounts. Even uh, Kevin O'Leary, who we know now is a little crazy out there in the market, but he was you know, touting this, this position as he was trying to put stablecoin because of the, the pay, uh, the interest and the yields that were being paid. That went down to zero very quickly. And I think a lot of this was in preparation for dealing with the stablecoin reserves to position. Paxos and Circle operate on the US soil and offer interest products. They are easy target for U.S. authorities. And I think that's the scenario. In the long run, current situation should pass uh, and stablecoins should continue to flourish and serve as a cornerstone of the crypto e- economy and, and really the ecosystem as a whole. Remember that Binance depegged, um, BUSD depegged de- today uh, and over the week as well. So the likelihood BUSD goes away. I know a lot of people have been talking about BUSD over the past year. Clearly, I think this is a marketing ploy by Binance to continue to, to deal with liquidity. And I'll show you a little bit about that. But before we go into that, uh, I want to get into um, Hester Pierce's statement. In case you guys missed this last week, this was Hester Pierce, who was a commissioner. There's three commissioners under the uh, chair being uh, Gensler. And here's what she had to say. Commission argues that the staking program should have been registered with the SEC as a securities offering whether one agrees with that or analysis or not, the, for, uh, the more fundamental question is whether the SEC registered registration would have been possible. And that's the big question. In the current climate, crypto-related offerings are not making it through the SEC's registration pipeline. So no real way for it to happen. Most concerning, though, is our solution to a registration violation is to shut down entirely a program that serves its people well. Uh, paternalistic and lazy regulators settle on a solution like this one to make the settlement. She's basically causing chair, calling the chair lazy. Do not initiate a public process or develop a workable registration process that provides valuable information to investors. They just shut it down. This is the thing that the SEC does uh, instead of actually implementing a structure in which you can go forward. There's a lot of problems with this. And one of the problems is this right here. You've got Stuart Alderati. This is the uh, lead attorney for the Ripple case. And he simply says 40 million Americans own crypto. Most of these are between the ages of 18 and 34 and are demographically and radically diverse. That's a lot of votes. Gensler is probably moving in on a political liability at this point. And remember what I said, follow the money and then follow the power. And DC is all about both money and power. So the question will be, how does this get slid away? Do we get slight regulation? Do we get some regulation that starts to push in in a position where, uh, because you you look at the SEC, it's under fire right now by most of the lawmakers. Whether you look at Toomey, you look at what's happening with Emmers. I mean, there is just about, I'd say a dozen different lawmakers right now that have the SEC and Gensler in their crosshairs. So I think this is, a question whether he even makes it out of here alive. And I say alive, meaning the sense of, uh, you know, intact with his job. Uh, Now, with that being said, EU uh, now is facing strict crypto uh, rules in a new published legal draft. Let me kind of zoom in on this so you can guys read it a little bit with me here. If you're listening on the podcast side of thing, um, these are, you know, I read for you guys as well. As part of the agreement, financial institutions will be required to report both their direct and indirect indirect exposure to cryptocurrencies during the time that the European Commission is drafting more granular granular regulations for the industry. So they're not done yet. Uh, the potentially increasing involvement of financial institutions and crypto assets related activities should be thoroughly reflected in the union uh, prudential framework in order to adequately mitigate, mitigate the risk of these instruments uh, for the institution's financial stability. 
All right, so that's you know a typical protection. But the point is, is that the EU continues to put more pressure on this from an aspect of the financial um, you know entities themselves. But more importantly, I think going to be on the exchanges and eventually to the stable coins uh, that will reside within crypto. Lot, lot happening. Just as a reminder, this is the token allocation of uh, Binance in terms of uh, their reserves. So you can kind of see a little bit of shifting here from BUSD to Tether, holding the number one position at $14 billion. Uh, BUSD coming in number two, and then Bitcoin holding in, and then ETH. Then BNB at almost $3 billion. So uh, USDC comes in at just $1.4 billion, but this essentially shows that there is a transitory scenario playing out in the stablecoin market. I'd uh, love to get your feedback on what stablecoins you hold or play with. Do you hold stablecoins at all? Love to get some insights. Let's jump over to the poll real quick and see what we got. Are Gary Gensler's tax against crypto causing you to rethink buying anytime soon? Most people, uh, 79%, yes, I'm buying the Gensler dips and or no problem at all. So really 21% holding, very small amount, holding out for more pain. Interesting. Let's get to some questions and take a look here. BC in the matrix, how else can the SEC make a quick 30 mil? I mean, no, they're going to get fines, but the point, I don't think this is about the money that the, the fines can potentially yield in here. Uh, I mean, they've already kind of done this with, you know, projects like Kraken. Coinbase sounds like they're going to go to the wall with this. We'll see if they really hold it. I think they'll do a deal. Um, Be Sovereign says, connect to, Congress, uh, on, uh, connect to Congress on crypto law. Totally agree. If you guys are not already talking to your uh, representatives, um, we should probably start putting links to all of the representative listings because there's a couple of websites out there that will give you your, you just put in your zip code, it'll drop your uh, house rep, your congressman, your state rep, uh, and your house rep. Um, and you can start, you can email them. Most of them will take emails. Sometimes you can even call them. But I think the more that we have them aware of what's happening is a very key thing, especially as we go forward in the future of crypto. All right. Uh, let's see here. What is Kathy up today? Is she pulling out a Coinbase or is she, I don't know. We'd have to look and see. Uh, remember, she owns a lot of Coinbase. We'd have to look and see what, what the ARC is doing. Jen Smith's come in. So activity moves to offshore exchanges or self-custody. Yes, self-sovereignty and self-control. Decentralization wins. Yep. And uh, this is all good, says Kathy Wood. So uh, good point there, Jen. What else do we have here today? Um, Cesar, what are you saying here? Gensler and the SEC put millions of dollars in retail investors at risk. There should be lawsuits against the SEC. You know, it's uh, this is something we talk about with with John Deaton a lot. You know, of just the the reckless abandon of the SEC, truly supposed to be protecting retail investors, but instead are protecting Wall Street and the big banks. That's a big problem for sure. Um, Crypto Steve says this is all due to the U.S. government wanting to eliminate competition on the impending uh, CBDC. That is a theory, Steve-O, That there are. You know, this whole choke model that might be playing out, the SEC could be a part of that. Could CBDCs be playing for this? Remember, digital currencies, I think, at some point will happen. The question is whether or not the government is smart enough to make it happen. But I'm very concerned about where that goes, the digital dollar, especially in the, in the self-sovereignty side of it, because I think that's when we get into scenarios where they control wallets. Uh, things of that nature, maybe they're going to start coming and asking for your ledger. I just don't know how this plays out. This is getting very, very interesting. Um, Hillinger says SEC FUD plus markets ignoring the Fed could cause some real carnage to markets. Inflation going to be sticky, no pivot soon. Damage of financial tightening is still on the way. I'm, I'm in and out on this, uh, mainly because Bitcoin's sentiment data that we've been tracking has been holding so uh, so well in light of these kinds of scenarios. Granted, we had the SEC dip last week, um, but the fact that we're still so resilient on some of the key assets in crypto, I feel like this still has a positive side up. We're going to have uh, Dr. Jeff Ross on this week. We are going to try to get Tom Crown on again. We'll do some analysis for you guys, but I'm really interested in what's going to happen after the CPI print tomorrow. Uh, love to get you guys' in input. Do you think? Because there's been some people saying that they think it's still going to be 
slightly down, which would be good. Some people are analyzing that the S&P could go up as much as a point and a half after the CPI uh, issuance. Inflation uh, report tomorrow coming in. We'll, of course, be reporting on that after uh, on the 3 o'clock live. We'll probably drop something in the morning over on the Diamond Circle. If you're not part of that, get involved. Just go to pbn3.substack or click the link below. You can join right there. It's very easy and it's free. You can jump into some of the better stuff, but right now we drop a lot of content that we don't do here on the show over on the Diamond Circle. So get involved. And it helps you, one, make yourself ready to talk to your regulators. It helps you talk to people who are of influence within your community for people who are going to get into it, uh, into crypto as a whole. So it, it does matter to kind of coalesce around a community. If you guys want to reach me, it is out there on Twitter, at Paul Barron. We'll catch you next time right here on Tech Bye. 